Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and we've covered options trading strategies on the channel before, but, but with stock prices dropping this year and the potential for a market crash, I wanted to show you how to use options to protect your money and limit how much you lose. In this video, I'll show you how options can limit your losses even if a stock crashes. I'll then reveal five options trading strategies that will protect your money while still giving you a chance to earn a return and how to set everything up. We're getting started right now, but first, you know, I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. I'll be covering five great strategies to protect your money in this video, but you'll also want to check out a free webinar coming up through Interactive Brokers on put options. It's totally free to register and you don't even need an account on the platform. Click through the link I'll leave in the description and go to education in the menu, then to webinars. There you'll find all the free webinars offered and here how to protect your portfolio with put options on March 7th. Click through there and reserve your seat now because I don't know if they're going to limit the number of attendees. Now another resource I like here besides those free webinars is these short videos, also under the education menu tab. Here you'll find lots of brief five and six minute videos on topics like options, trading, and even cryptocurrency. It's all completely free and no sign up is required, so check that out. Now, these first two option strategies are going to use call options for upside and protection. A call option is an investment you buy that gives you the right to buy a stock at a certain price called that strike price until a set date in the future, the expiration date of the option. For that right or, or this investment, you pay a premium or an amount up front. For example, if I go to the options available on shares of Tesla, I can buy options that expire in different months, even different weeks, and lock in a set price all the way up to that date. Now I've clicked to the options expiring in January 2023, which gives me the right to buy shares of Tesla at a set price for almost a year. You see the strike price, that set price per share that we're locking in with each call option down the middle here, and, and the calls on the left. Then the premium or the price investors are paying for that option is in the column marked last. So here we can lock in the right to buy shares of Tesla for $900 each through January by paying this premium of $202 right now. Now, of course, that begs the question, why would you pay $200 just for the right to buy shares of Tesla for $900, especially if it's trading right now for $917 each? You're basically paying $1,100 a share for something that you could just buy in the market for $917. Because that call option only costs you $200 right now, and you get that locked in price throughout the entire year until that expiration. If shares of Tesla make a run at the all time high of $1,250 each, I can still buy them for $900 because I have that call option. Even better though, since the value of the call option is going to increase along with that stock, if the share price increased, say, 10% to $1,000 each, then maybe that call option is now going to be worth $240. I could just sell the call option and take that 20% return, and, and it wouldn't even have to touch the shares. So these kinds of leveraged returns are how a lot of investors use call options, but, but they can also provide a great way to protect your money and even limit your losses. Our first strategy is one of the simplest, but also one of my favorites, the covered call. This is where you sell call options against a stock you own. That means you collect a premium cash payment now while giving another investor the right to buy the shares from you at a certain price. So that's an important difference. You can not only buy call options, but also sell them. And here, if we own shares of Tesla, but, but are worried about maybe we weakness this year, we can sell those call options with a $950 strike price and collect that $192 in cash from the buyer. And then there's a couple of ways you can look at this. Uh, one is that that $192 cash payment is a return of 21% on the current price. Or you could look at it from the perspective of protecting your money. And shares of Tesla could now fall to $725 each. That's the current price minus that, that $192 you collected before you even start losing money on your shares. Now understand that protecting your stocks like this does come at a cost. That's something that we'll see in all of these option strategies. By selling those call options, you're giving the right to another investor to buy those shares for that strike price or, or the $950 each in our example. So if shares of Tesla zoom higher to $1,000 over the next 10 months, you still are only going to get that $950 each. It's just the trade-off you have to make for being able to protect your money. You give up some of that potential upside return for the greater protection, but you can manage this. By selling the call options at a higher strike price, say the $1,250 strike here, then you collect less money, but you keep more of that upside price return. Here you would collect that $91 in cash for selling the call options, protecting yourself from a 10% slide in the stock, 
but still keep that return all the way up to $1,250 per share. I know this is a lot to work through and don't feel like you need to be an option strategy expert the first time you see this. It took me years to really grasp the idea of these different strategies, but, but stick with it because these are some great ways to, to not only protect your money, but also increase your returns. And that covered call strategy is a great one for any time you wanna keep your shares of a stock, but are worried about a near-term pullback or, or even that the stock price is gonna trade flat for a while. For example, after an 87% return on shares of Chevron over the last 16 months and a jump in the price of oil, I was worried about a near-term pullback. So I sold a call option at the $140 strike price here expiring in June and collected $6.55 a share. Now that's a 5% downside protection. I still get the dividends from the stock and another 6% upside over the next five months. So then if the shares do pull back or just stay under $140 each by the expiration in June, I keep the stock and the cash I collected on those call options. Next here, a twist on that covered call for a lower price is the bull call spread strategy. Now this is where you sell a call option at a higher strike price, just like in the previous strategy, but then instead of owning the stock, you buy a call option at a lower strike price as well. This allows you to take part in the returns on the stock, but at a much lower cost, and it totally limits your downside. Using Tesla again as an example, you could buy the call options with a strike price of $870 each for $223, and at the same time, sell the 960 strike options for $180 each. Here, your total cost would be $42.38, and that's gonna be the maximum amount you could lose even if the shares fall below that $870 by expiration date. Now let's walk through what this means, and I think it's gonna become a lot clearer. Buying the call options at that $870 strike price means you lock in that price to buy Tesla. You pay the $223 each share to lock in that price, but, but then collect the $180 each for selling those $960 strike options. Now that means the total cost of your investment only costs you $42.38 each. That's each share right now. Now you have the right to buy the stock at $870 each at any point before expiration next January. So, so your total cost would be that $870 plus the $42 or $912.38 each. And so the beauty of these bull spreads is in that set of outcomes. If shares of Tesla crash lower, closing below the $870 each, then the most you can lose is $42 a share. If you own the stock outright and it fell 20% to $730, you'd be out $187 a share. But, but with this strategy, your losses will never be more than the amount that you pay for that call option. But then let's say that shares of Tesla go nowhere and close right around $917 each through January. Here you're going to exercise the right to buy at $870 each with that call option and you get all your money paid back plus some. If you buy at that $870 plus the $42 it costs you to set up the strategy, then your total cost is still under the current price. The other side of this is since that stock price is below the $960 strike price and the other call options, that investor would do nothing and just let them expire worthless. The remaining scenario, say shares of Tesla jumped higher to $1,000 each. You'd make money on your $870 call options, but only up to that point of the $960 options that you did sell. Now this would limit your potential return, but again, it's just that trade-off that you make by limiting your downside risk. Here, just like with the previous strategy and any of these option strategies, you can play around with these strike prices on the options, maybe, maybe picking a higher strike price option to sell so, so you keep more of the upside potential in that stock. For example, if you did this strategy buying the 880 calls and selling the 1250 options, it would cost a little bit more with a net of $108.87 a share, but, but you'd have that return potential to the higher strike price. You'd still limit your losses to just over $100 a share if Tesla dropped below $880, but, but then you'd earn a return all the way up to that $1,250 each. Here's a graphical way to think about this bull call spread, uh, maybe an easier way to imagine it. You limit your downside totally to that net amount that you pay. At any stock price under $100 here in this chart, you still only lose that amount that you paid for the options. Then you make money in that sloping section of the graph, recouping some of your investment first when the stock price is above that lower call option until actually making a positive return all the way up to the higher strike price. Then at any stock price above that higher call option, your return is gonna be capped at that point. Now those first two option strategies used call options exclusively, and I actually use the covered call more than any other option strategy. But now I wanna share three more using put options as well to help you limit your losses even more. Put options are like the mere opposite of calls. These give you the right to sell a stock for a specific price at a set date. 
It's similar to that idea of selling call options, but th there are some important differences that you need to know. In our Tesla example, we can buy these put options with a $900 strike price for $178.94 per share. Now that gives us the right to sell shares of Tesla for $900 at any point until January of next year. So just say that we love the long-term upside in Tesla, but we're a little worried that Elon is going to go on a, another one of his classic Twitter tirades over the next 10 months, getting himself and the company in trouble. Buying this put option then means we lock in the lowest price we can sell our shares at $900 each. Even if Elon says he just wants to go to space and quits as CEO, even if the share price drops to $500 each, we can still sell for $900 because we have these call options. So you can see how these would be a great tool to protect your money, and I've got three more strategies using them. The long straddle option strategy is a great way to limit your risk, but not the returns. Here, the strategy is you're gonna be buying a call and a put option at the same strike price and expiration date, so effectively you're getting an upside return if the stock price moves higher or lower. For example, we could buy the call and put options for Tesla at a strike price of $920 for January expiration. Buying both of these would cost a total of $388 a share and would give us the right to buy or sell the stock at that price. Now, the long straddle is a great strategy when you expect a major move in the stock, but you're just not quite sure in which direction. This would work very well recently with a lot of the growth stocks rising or falling 20% or more on earnings day. Because here, you're going to make money as long as the stock price closes above or even below that strike price, as long as it does enough so by the cost of those two options, and you're going to be totally limiting your downside to that cost. In our Tesla example, you would make money if the shares closed below $532 or above $1,300 by the expiration date. You find those two numbers by taking the strike price plus or minus the amount that you paid for both options. Now, since you have the right to buy or sell the stock at $920 strike price, you really don't care which direction it goes as long as it goes big. And here's a way to visualize this. If you have the strike price of $250 on your put and call options, then you start recouping your investment at any point above or below that price. At $250 a share, you'd neither buy or sell the stock and you'd be limited to losing the cost of both the options. Anything above the $250 though, and you'd use the call options to buy the shares for that price and would break even if the stock price was at least the $250 plus the cost of both options. Anything above that point would be unlimited profit. And here the same thing applies to that put option. If the stock falls below that $250 strike price, then, then you use the put to sell the shares and start recouping your investment. Here your upside return is technically limited to the stock price falling to zero, but it usually works out the same in practice. Now maybe a simpler way here to limit your downside in a stock that you own is called the married put. This is where you buy put options in the same number of shares that you own, giving you the right to sell those shares at a price from now until the option's expiration. It effectively puts a floor on the price that you get from your shares. For example, if I own 100 shares of Tesla but am worried about that tweet storm sending the stock lower, then I could buy the put options at this $900 strike. And that would give me the right to sell the shares for $900 no matter what, meaning I've eliminated all downside risk below that $900 per share. Now, the benefit of this married put strategy, unlike the covered call strategy, which only reduces your downside risk and caps your upside return, this strategy caps your downside risk and leaves your upside return unlimited. Your downside is limited to that $900 strike price, but you still own the shares, so you can participate in the upside if they jump higher. And this married put strategy is for when you want to totally limit your downside risk in a stock you own. In fact, many investors think of this strategy as an insurance policy against a major crash in the stock. Now, you know what we say here on the channel. It ain't all rainbows and unicorns. There is a disadvantage here in the married put, just like any of these strategies. Just like with an insurance policy, you're paying that premium of $179 in our example, so, so the shares would have to drop below $721 each, or about a 21% drop from the current price for that protection to kick in. That's just the price you pay for totally limiting your downside while keeping that upside return unlimited. Uh, like all the strategies here, you can play around with which options you choose. So, so buying options with maybe a lower strike price is going to cost less, while, while those with a higher strike price are going to cost more, but, but that protect you from the smaller drop in the shares. This option strategy really works best though to protect against those big double digit crashes, limiting your losses, but keeping the upside unlimited like you see here in the graph. We're coming up on the last option strategy, one of my favorite combinations of puts and calls to lock in your gains and limit losses, but, but I want to get your feedback on this as well. You'll notice that using these option strategies, there is that trade-off between protecting your money and the potential returns. 
uh, some totally protect your downside, but but also limit the upside while, while others are only gonna limit your losses, but, but keep that upside unlimited. So where do you come down on that trade-off? Uh, which of these five strategies is your favorite for that exchange between, between limiting losses but keeping your returns? Scroll down and let me know in the comments below. Similar to the call spread, but when you own the stock, the protective caller can lock in existing returns. In this strategy, you buy a put option at a lower strike price, but then offset some of that cost by selling the call option at the higher price. This is gonna limit your downside, locking in that bottom price for your shares in case of a crash, but isn't quite as expensive as that married put strategy. Here in our Tesla example, if you paid $166 for the put options at the 880 strike price, and then sold the call options at the $960 strike for $180 each, you would limit your downside risk in the stock and actually collect a cash bonus of almost $15 each. Just like in that covered call strategy, you have the upside return potential to $960 a share and have totally covered your downside at $880 each, like in the married put. And the payoff graphic here is a lot like combining the covered call and the married put strategies with the benefits of each. Because you're offsetting some or even all of the costs to buy that put, you protect your money from a much smaller drop in the shares, but, but also totally remove that downside risk. Again, this strategy works best for someone that already owns the stock and maybe even has an existing return Turn that they want to lock in while still holding the stock to keep those dividends coming in. You can still get a little bit higher return plus the dividends while totally reducing your downside risk below your put price. Check out the link below and reserve your seat on that free webinar for put option strategies or click on the video to the right for my five favorite option strategies and how to get started. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.